Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's great to have you all in worship this evening as we're celebrating the birth of our Savior and our King Jesus. Today's theme is, oh, excuse me, a Savior is born to change the world. I invite all of you to take these truths that we learn from God's Word, apply it to your lives, and live in this joy of Christmas every single day of your lives. We also welcome all those who are worshiping with us online and also on the radio as well. We open, it, open with the opening hymn, hymn number 63, Angels We Have Heard on High from the Red Hymnal. Please note that almost all of the hymns this evening will be coming from the Red Hymnal. Begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in the opening responsive prayer. O gracious and almighty Father, we praise you that you kept your ancient promise by sending your everlasting Son in human flesh. You sent Jesus as a lowly child to demonstrate your concern for all. This weak and lonely and the troubled and frightened, the timid, helpless. No one is overlooked by your ever-seeking eyes. No one is excluded from your upholding arms. No one is denied the comfort and help of your outstretched hand. You sent Jesus as the Savior of the world to, del to deliver all from the curse of sin the power of death, and the torment of hell. He took our place. He was born under the law to set us free. He became the innocent lamb of sacrifice. He came to die and rise again in order that we might live eternally. Firmly implant this good news in our hearts and fill us with an eager desire to spread the word concerning what we will hear tonight. Amen. 
You sent Jesus as the light of the world to drive out all darkness that would rob us of the full life that you intend for us. May the joy that will be for all people be our joy. May the peace on earth on, to, to all on whom his favor rests be our peace. May the treasure that Mary pondered in her heart be our treasure. You may be seated. We hear a anthem from the mixed choir, One Small Child. Old Testament lesson for this evening comes from Micah chapter 5 and serves as our sermon text. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. His goings forth are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Then the remaining survivors from his brothers will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell securely, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be their peace. The word of the Lord. 
We continue by singing hymn number 54, Where Shepherds Lately Knelt. reading comes from Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It trains us to reject ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope that is the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are his own chosen people, eager to do good works. The word of the Lord. We continue by hearing and also singing along with an anthem from the choir. It comes from the blue hymnal, hymn number 329, All My Heart Again Rejoices. The congregation is invited to sing verses 4 through 6.
Our gospel lesson for this evening comes from Luke chapter 2. You may remain seated for the reading of the gospel. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first census take while, taken while Quirinius was governor in Syria, and everyone went to register, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the town of Nazareth, into Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and family line of David. He went to be registered with Mary, his wife, who was pledged to him in marriage and was expecting a child. And so it was that while they were there, the time had come for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were in the same country shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great, great joy, which will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior was born for you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude from the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward mankind. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, now let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they told others the message they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed by what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. At this time, please, we ask everyone to fill out the white attendance cards that can be found in the pew in front of you. You can also use the QR code which you can found in your worship folder. We continue with the next hymn, hymn number 52, On Christmas Night All Christians Sing.
Blessed Christmas to all of you. We have the blessing of being together, worshiping our Savior on this Christmas Eve, singing songs with joyful hearts about the Christ child and hearing the Word of God about that eternal ruler from Bethlehem who changed the world and has changed us as well. Dear Christian friends, let me just read the first portion of the text again, Micah chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. Bethlehem. What was Bethlehem like? Have you ever thought about that? Bethlehem, a small town, little town, maybe 300 permanent residents, a sleepy little town, suburb, a few miles south of Jerusalem. Here in our text, it calls Bethlehem small. But then if we go to Matthew chapter 2, we see that the chief priests and the elders called it not the least. Well, which one is it? Is it small or, or not the least of Judah? The riddle. The answer to this riddle is that both are true. Both are true. Bethlehem was small. Not very important, unimpressive on its own. A small town. But oh, the one that would be born there. That's what made it not the least of Judah. That's what gave, its, gave it its importance. The Lord God's place for Bethlehem in his whole plan of salvation. That's where the eternal ruler would be born, in Bethlehem. That eternal ruler that would change the whole world. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at, this ruler for the world from Bethlehem. So Bethlehem is a little town, but a mighty ruler comes from it. Listen to what it says. Remember, Micah is writing 700, 750 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, Though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. Why Bethlehem? Why did God choose Bethlehem for this birth of the Savior? Well, it was prophesied. So since it was prophesied that Bethlehem would be the place, it was going to be the place. But Bethlehem has another connection. We go back, we go back to another ruler that was born in Bethlehem. You know that ruler, it's David. He was born in Bethlehem. And he became king. So we have an unimpressive town, Bethlehem. An unimpressive individual, David, being born in Bethlehem. Remember, remember when Samuel went? to anoint the next king of Israel. First of all, the brothers came forward. They looked, at least, some of them looked very impressive. But oh no, that's not the next ruler. The one out in the field, the shepherd, that's the one that God chose to be the next ruler, David. Unimpressive individual from, a, from an unimpressive town. You know, that's how God works. When you think about it, think through Scripture. Think about how he chooses individuals that are common folk. And he chooses common places. Unimpressive individuals and unimpressive places to carry out kingdom work. He uses us to share the gospel. That is an incredible privilege that we have. The Lord God, using all of us in different ways in his plan of salvation. Bethlehem. What a town. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, 
from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. So God works in this way, using unimpressive things for big things. Think about baptism. Think about the Lord's Supper, these two sacraments that the Lord God has given to us. What do we have there? You could use just a little bit of water. Unimpressive. With the Lord's Supper, a little bit of wine, a little bit of bread. Oh, but when connected with the Word of God, it is powerful as the Holy Spirit works through those sacraments, giving forgiveness, causing to be born again, to be strengthened in faith, to be brought into God's kingdom. Wow. The Lord God Almighty, born in Bethlehem, this little town, but you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, from you will go out the one who will be the ruler for me in Israel. His goings forth are from, be are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. So it, it takes us back. It, it takes us back to David, a few hundred years before Micah lived. And David was given the promise of the Savior, that the Savior would come from his line. You see, David born in Bethlehem, Jesus born in Bethlehem, there's a connection there. But David, an earthly ruler. This ruler, the one born in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem, the ruler we're talking about, that's the Lord God. Born in Bethlehem, taking on human flesh. So it goes back to other prophecies, the prophecy given to David. I will raise up after you your seed who will come from your own body, David. I will establish his kingdom. He will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This was the Lord's promise given to David. The Lord's promise given to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob all through the Old Testament, a promise that God would fulfill. Speaking about David's part in that promise, in Psalm 89 we read, I have sworn, God says to David, my servant, I will establish your seed forever and I will build your throne through all generations talking about the Savior, born in Bethlehem, a forever kingdom. As he came, he would establish this eternal kingdom in a very special way, taking our place, paying for our sins. How could he do that? I can't pay for your sins. You can't pay for mine. You can't shed blood and pay for my sins. I can't do that for you. How could this one born in Bethlehem, do it. Well, it tells us, it says in the text, his goings forth are from the beginning, from the days of eternity. This takes us way back, further back, before Micah, before David. Wait, in fact, it takes us to eternity. That's this baby born in Bethlehem. The true God from eternity. No beginning. That's who was born there in Bethlehem. That's what Micah is saying here under inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the one born in Bethlehem would be the Lord God taking on human flesh. Micah lived at a time where things weren't going very well for the Israelites. If you take a look at the history from when Micah lived about 700, 750 B.C. to when Jesus came, you see that the Israelites had a tough go of it. And a lot of it due to their own doing as they grumbled against God, complained against God, turned against God. The Assyrians came down and hauled off the northern kingdom. And then the Babylonians came down taking the southern kingdom. It looked like maybe God had forgotten about his people. 
Maybe God had forgotten about his promise. Oh, no. Look at what it says here in our text. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Then the remaining survivors from his brothers will return to the people of Israel. So for a long time, it was looking like God maybe had abandoned his people. It was, it was looking like God had maybe gone away from his promise. Oh, but that's not what was happening. It says, therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when the woman who is in labor bears a child. Not forgotten. Always fulfilled. Every single promise that the Lord makes is always fulfilled. 100%. You can count on his promises every single time. And when he made this promise, he was seeing it through. In his way and at his time. And so the baby was born of Mary. This baby, the eternal ruler that changed the entire world. What did this ruler, this eternal ruler, this Messiah, this promised one, the anointed one, carry out and do? Our text explains to us. He will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They will dwell securely, for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be their peace. There's so much in that little section. So much comfort, so much strength for God's people. First of all, it talks about he will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord. He will shepherd. What does that bring to mind? It brings Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. It brings other passages where Jesus is talking about himself as the shepherd. As the shepherd who did what? He was born to die. And to pay for all of your sins. You will stand and shepherd with the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord is God. And the promises fulfilled when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay it down and I take it up again. That is the eternal ruler who changed the world. As he gave up his life and then took it back again. Gave up his life on the cross as full payment for every sin that we have ever done or will do. He paid for the sins of the whole world. How do we know that for sure? His resurrection from the dead is the announcement of his victory over sin and death and the devil. He is the good shepherd. Gave his life up for the sheep. What else does it say that comforts us? They will dwell securely. When God says that his people will dwell securely, he means it. Even though you go through difficulty and trouble and hardship, and there are so many stresses, you can, make, you can be sure that God is with you. And you are dwelling securely. His hand is over you. He watches over you every moment, working everything for your good. They will dwell securely. And you can be sure your salvation is secure as well because it has been paid for by the blood of Christ. This eternal ruler who changed the world and has changed you as well. And then it says, they will dwell securely for at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be their peace. This one, this eternal ruler, will be their peace. At this time of year, we hear a great deal about peace, don't we? People sing about peace. They talk about peace. What kind of peace are they mainly talking about? I think, for the most part, it's talking about peace among people, among nations, among maybe family members, among friends. But that's not the greatest peace of all. And that's not the peace that is first being talked about here. 
This is a peace that comes from this eternal ruler, this Savior, this Messiah who went to the cross and brought us peace with God. Our sins separated us from God. And you know that they should send us to hell. But God brought about peace with him for us. He reconciled us, brought us back to himself. How? Through this ruler, this Savior, this eternal one, the Son of God who took on human flesh and went the way of the cross for us and went the way of keeping the commandments for us so that we would be righteous in the, in the sight of God. This is your peace. After all of that, don't you just want to go out and tell people about this eternal ruler? Don't, don't you just want to live for this Savior who died for you? Don't you want to just go out and show love to people because that's what God wants us to do, to love others like he loves us, to forgive others like he forgives us? Absolutely. So we go out, we leave this church, we take it into our, our lives, and we shine. We shine as we have been touched by the light of the world, our Savior, this eternal ruler who has changed the world. And he changed you too. Thanks be to God. Have a very blessed Christmas. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We respond to this wonderful good news as we give our offerings to the Lord. And as the baskets come forward, we will dedicate all of our offerings to the Lord, those given here, and those given online, and those given other ways as well. And as we give our offerings, we sing the next hymn, hymn number 61, Hark! the herald angels sing.
before we have our responsive Christmas Eve prayer, we have a number of uh, intercessory prayers. Uh, we pray for the families of Ralph Krieger, Karen Miller, and Carol Selno, um, all of whom God has called home to heaven over the last week or two. And also for Wilfred Keel, Bonnie Pyrick, and Helen Ewert, all three of whom were hospitalized this last week. And Shirley Reynolds is uh, the grandmother of Julia Cruz, who will be celebrating the 90th, her 90th birthday. We'll remain seated for prayer. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we turn to you and we praise your holy name for taking Ralph, Karen, and Carol home to heaven to be with you forever. What a wonderful Christmas gift you've given them to see their Savior's glorious face on this Christmas. May the families and all of us be comforted by the victory over death brought about by your own son's resurrection from the dead. Remind us all of your promises to be with us and to work all for our good. Console and comfort those who grieve and lead them and us to number our days that we be prepared through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Dear physician of both body and soul, we ask you also to be with Wilfred, Bonnie, and Helen. If it be your will, help them to recover from their ailments quickly. Strengthen also their faith and trust in you to know that you are with them and will never leave their side. We also give you thanks for the years you have given Shirley Reynolds as she celebrates her 90th birthday. We rejoice in the psalmist, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. In the years you may yet permit her on this earth, have her to continue to trust and live for you through Jesus Christ. Prepare the eternity with you in heaven forever. And we join in the Christmas Eve prayer. Gracious Father, when the time had fully come, you sent your Son to carry out your plan to save the world from the tyranny of sin, the threat of death, and the power of Satan. On this holy night, strengthen our faith as we ponder the depth of your divine love. Impress on us the poverty and pain your Son endured in our place, how he willingly set aside his power and place and assumed the weakness of an infant and the starkness of a stable. Lead us to acknowledge the sins which compelled his humiliation and the love which accepted his lowliness. Take away our fears and fright and fill us with joy as we hear the message that Jesus was born for us and that he came to restore peace with you and mend the bond broken by sin. Move us to sing our carols and hymns, not with passing pleasure, but with depth of praise for his extraordinary love. Lead us to kneel at his manger with hearts of faith and to see the, their, the God-man who takes away the sins of the world. Guide and guard us so that the happiness shared with family and friends does not delay or discourage our journey to his holy crib. Fill us with an eager joy that moves us to share the good news with others, especially those who may have forgotten or dismissed the love of God in Christ. Give us faith-filled maturity to recognize that the best gift we can give to children is the message of Jesus, who was born as a baby and died on a cross to save them from for, save them for heaven. During this hectic holiday, provide us with quiet times to remember what the birth of Jesus really means for us and all people. That he came to free us from the evil forces that separated us from your love. That he lived and died to forgive our sins and that he rose in triumph to prepare a place where we will live with you forever. And we stand as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you.
peace. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, uh, we will be singing Silent Night, and you can illuminate your candles. Uh, if you look on the bottom, there will be a little bit of a switch there. Um, so the lights will be turned down as we sing this, and there will be uh, pictures that will be showing up on the screen for, um, as we go through this and from, for some silent reflection at the end.
Merry Christmas. It's great to have you all worshiping with us this evening. Um, I have to apologize if it was a little chilly in here. The cold outside, are, we're having a little bit of issues with the heat, but we have a full church, so I think it warmed it up nicely in here. It's great to see a full church on Christmas Eve. Uh, just a, a few announcements. As you leave the um, candles um, that you're holding, please place them in uh, the boxes that you'll find there at the entrances. Uh, either entrance should have those boxes there. We also, we notice all the luminaries are inside here. You can find the list, list of names of who those are for in the um, back part of your bulletin. And we um, thank all, all, everybody who put so much work into um, putting those together for us. Tomorrow morning, we have a different service than this one. It's kind of a hymn sing service where um, we're celebrating Christ on Christmas Day. It's at 9 a.m. Uh, we'd love to have all you back for celebrating tomorrow as well. Other things coming up this week, Tuesday at 11 a.m., uh, there will be Karen Miller's funeral, and then Thursday at 11 a.m., Carol Selno's funeral uh, for the family. Um, also, our teacher, Rachel Veith, declined the call. She'll be staying here at St. John's. A, a nice Christmas gift there, knowing that Rachel will be continuing to teach across the street for us. And please also note, um, New Year's Eve, um, we have a 6 p.m. service, and New Year's Day, a 9 a.m. service. Those are going to be the same services, um, identical services for both of those then. Those are all the announcements. Have a blessed Christmas Eve and a blessed Christmas.